Hi, I'm Jim Sperniotopoulos, and this is MedPick's Case of the Week, number 664. As always, you can earn CME credit by visiting the MedPick's website at medpicks.usuhs.eu. We have no financial disclosures and no conflict of interest to report related to this presentation. The patient we have is a 40-year-old man who had right-sided abdominal pain, no chest findings. He had a normal colonoscopy, EGD, HIDA, and right upper quadrant ultrasound. An incidental finding was noted on his chest radiograph. The finding is difficult to see here on the routine windows for the chest radiograph. A cone down view with higher contrast demonstrates a stranded opacity appearing to connect to the left hilum and the left lower lobe. So we have an opacity that must be explained. A chest CT was ordered. The chest CT clearly demonstrates a pulmonary nodule extending to the periphery of the left lung. We can also see this with lung windows. A coronal reformation demonstrates linear opacities that appear to connect the pulmonary nodule with the left hilum. Now we have to give a differential diagnosis, and this most likely represents a pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. One of the linear opacities is probably a pulmonary artery. The other one is probably a pulmonary vein. And they are probably connected by a pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. So in this particular case, because of the information from the coronal CT, we have a relatively limited differential diagnosis of a pulmonary AVM. Pulmonary AVMs are also called fistulae. The vast majority, up to 85%, are associated with hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Conversely, about one-third of patients with HHT will also have pulmonary AVMs. Up to 70% are in the lower lobes. The majority, two-thirds, are unilateral. Of the one-third of patients who have multiple lesions, about half of them are bilateral. The AVMs vary in size from microscopic to several centimeters in diameter. Complications include cerebral embolization through this right-to-left shunt. Core pulmonale and high-output CHF are relatively uncommon because the lung already has a low-resistance circulation. Cyanosis is possible, but hemoptysis is relatively uncommon. In considering more details about HHT, it is also known as osler weber rondu syndrome. The prevalence varies from geographic place to place from as low as 1 in 40,000 to as high as 1 in 2300. It is an autosomal dominant disorder and four genes have been identified so far. The most common are HHT type 1 and HHT type 2. One of the variants is an association of hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia with juvenile polyposis syndrome. Diagnostic criteria include the presence of three features from this Curacao list, including epistaxis, telangiectasia, visceral lesions, and a family history. The telangiectasias may be in the mucous membranes or in the skin. Complications include the vascular dysplasia and the possibility of hemorrhage, cerebral embolization from the pulmonary AVMs, and both cerebral and hepatic arteriovenous malformations. About 20% of patients with HHT have no family history and represent a new mutation or proband. The penetrance is age-related and is nearly 100% by the fifth decade. The vast majority of patients present with epistaxis from nasal telangiectasias. They may have skin and mucous membrane telangiectasias. Pulmonary involvement or AVMs occur in about one-third of the patients. Conversely, about 85% of patients with pulmonary AVMs will meet the Curacao criteria for HHT. GI bleeding occurs in about 1 in 7 patients, and CNS complications include TIA, strokes, and brain abscesses because of the embolization of bacteria through the right-to-left shunt. Brain and hepatic arteriovenous malformations occur in a minority of patients, probably around 10%. The natural history is not well studied, but the lifespan is usually not significantly shortened in most patients. So this was a case of hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia with a pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. Just as a reminder, you can earn CME credit by visiting the MedPix case of the week, and this was week number 664. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I have approved this message.